Now, this is a Daily Caller article, ladies and gentlemen, and it says that the President Donald Trump has freed up $8 billion from various government agencies to build the wall, according to Fox News' Brian Kilmeade. Trump announced earlier on Thursday that he plans on signing a bipartisan congressional bill that provides limited border wall funding and declaring a national emergency at the southern border. Now, before I even go on with this, Barry, I want to ask you a question. People are all up in arms, just like, oh my goodness gracious, the border wall. I can't believe he went and called a national emergency. No other president has done this. This is an extreme disgrace. Barry, is this the only time that a president has called for a national emergency? Not only is the answer no, it's no in 50-foot letters, Jermaine. Your viewers are going to be shocked by what I'm going to tell them now. The president of the United States, whether Democrat or Republican, uh, since the 70s has uh, very broad powers to declare national emergencies and to fund unilaterally from the executive branch projects that the president declares as emergencies. When I tell you how many have happened since 1976, I think when the law started, people will flip out. It's over 50. And get this, there's 33 still in effect today. 33 national emergencies. And I'll bet you not one of your viewers can name two of them, three of them or four of them, and over 50 have been declared by Republicans and Democrats always done without any fanfare, never any news, never any reporting, and get this, Germain, never ever a challenge. So the constitutionality of declaring a national emergency is in concrete. And if this gets challenged in court, which Trump predicts it will, I'm sure it'll start at the very, very liberal Ninth Circuit out in San Francisco. Eventually it'll get to the Supreme Court, and eventually, it'll get approved because the president has the powers. He got a million one or something like that, uh, uh, a million three, uh, sorry, a billion three out of the funding bill, which is you know, one seventh of what the wall will cost. They'll spend that while it's going through the courts. And then by the time it gets to the courts, he'll go get the rest of the money. What's her name? Nancy go to hell Pelosi. She stepped up and said that, you know, no other president has done this. This is what she said on this scale. This is what she said on this scale. And then she also said that if imagine what a democratic president can do. Okay? We believe that guns are a national emergency. And who knows? A democratic president may uh, call that type of emergency if they get in power. What do you say about that? Is that threatening or is, well, got, is that a challenge? Well, absolutely it is. And I've got like three responses. Number one, Nancy Pelosi ought to read the Constitution. There is a protected right within the Constitution uh, called the Second Amendment, the right to keep and bear arms. Um, you pass a law, even if it's a national emergency by executive action, and it'll get blocked by every court in the country. Uh, so she's wrong constitutionally, number one. Number two, at various times in the past, every Democratic leader, and I mean every single one, has been in support of border security. Jermaine, the only reason why they're going psycho now is because it's Donald Trump that's proposing it. I always ask the following question. If you lock your doors at home, at your house, or in the case of Nancy Pelosi, at your estates, of which she has a number of them, why do you do that? And the standard answer is because I want to keep bad people from coming in. Well, why wouldn't you want to lock the door on the country in the same way? So people have to ring the doorbell, ask for permission to come in, and you let them in if and when they meet the requirements. Like your parents, Jermaine, mm -hmm. like my parents that came in and rang the bell and said, hey, I'd like to come in. What do I got to do to stay here? And the United States has some pretty normal requirements. And if you meet those, you get to stay. 
The idea that we don't want border security is insanity. There are now several candidates running for president or unannounced, but they're running for president that said if elected, not only will they not build any border security, germane, they will tear down the fencing that's yeah. there and eliminate the border, effectively merging us, the United States, with Mexico and the rest of Central and South America. That's their platform. And there's a very simple reason why they want it. Because illegal aliens, which are people who have entered the country illegally, they are felons, mm -hmm get registered to vote for that specific political party and by and large follow their instructions. So the registration numbers go to the moon and it becomes an impossible task to elect anybody who's not from that particular party. Now in this case, it's the Democrat party. And if you happen to be running on a pro-constitution, pro-conservative, pro-Republican belief agenda, you'll never get elected because another four or five million people pouring into the country over the next couple of years will tilt the balance permanently. And my belief, that's why they want it. All this noise about it's racist, it's anti-people of color, it's anti-American, it's anti-whatever, this is something the Nazis would have done. Um, on previous shows, you and I have discussed how many countries around the world have better border security than the United States. Absolutely. And it's 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 almost every single country in the world. <laughs> and and they and they've got border systems, my goodness, in some cases with two and three fences with a ditch in between and razor wire on top and a moat and you name it and dogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been all along the border in many places where there's a sign now entering Mexico, and then you go the other way and you turn around and there's a sign that says now entering the United States. There's not even a line in the sand, Germain, so you can run through a thousand people. In San Diego, I used to I used to go down there at night to see it, and before they built the fence, what, 30 years, 25 years ago, I guess, people poured across by the thousands every single night, thousands. Mm -hmm. And on the American side, there'd be three or four of the green border patrol jeeps, and I said to myself, my goodness, these guys are so overwhelmed, I can't even imagine what a horrible job they have, where they catch one out of 10 people, you know, and the other nine are running like crazy. There's signs on the freeway, at least there used to be, at San Ysidro, which is the busiest, busiest border crossing in the world, that's San Diego border crossing. The signs show a father running, pulling a mother, pulling a child, and these signs are along the five freeway, meaning watch out for people running across the border. It's that bad. Whoa, they warn you on the freeways. So yeah. look, anyone that's against it, as far as I'm concerned, going back to what you said a minute ago, is breaking their oath. Their oath to protect the United States. And I would advise them to open their doors at night and put up a big sign, illegals, welcome here in my home. And if they're not willing to do that, then I don't want them carrying out the same belief system forced upon the rest of us at the border. If they were just, I mean, just sensible, Barry, all you gotta do is step back, take a look at this situation. You'll say, you know what? We gotta put up a wall. We got to, you know? So hey, Jermaine, <laughs> Jermaine before, we leave, before we leave this subject, by the way, I, I used to love Nickelodeon when my kids were <laughs> Um, but I didn't want those people running my government. <laughs> um, let me read a couple of the national emergencies that have been declared that Absolutely. you don't know about and I didn't know about. Okay, so starting way back, you know, in 1979, Jimmy Carter, when he was president, had a national emergency regarding Iran. That was a hostage crisis. Um, then Bill Clinton had just a trainload of them. Uh, Bombing in regards to bombings in Jerusalem, uh, Italian, sorry, Iranian petroleum uh, assets, Colombian drug lords, uh, movement of vessels um, around Cuba, uh, Sudanese government uh, transactions blocked. George W. Bush had them uh, regarding the Western Balkans uh, and Albania and Macedonia. Um, he had some relating to 9-11. Um, he actually had a bunch. 
Uh, George Bush passed one um, against Zimbabwe when Mugabe was president. There was uh, two against Iraq. There was a another one against Belarus. How many of your viewers even know where that country is? Uh, here's another <laughs> one. like a, be- a ballet move, you know, yeah. Belarus. <laughs> Here you go. Here's one in the Congo about their elections. Here's one about Lebanon. Here's one about North Korea. Okay, here's the Barack Obama ones. Somali par- pirates um, seizing assets about relating to Muammar Gaddafi in Libya. Here's one about uh, gangs in the Soviet Union, the Yakuza in Japan, the Camorra in Italy, and the Los Zetas in Mexico. Uh, Here's one against the Yemen government. Here's one against Crimea. Go find that one. Here's one against Sudan. Here's one against uh, Central African Republic. Uh, Here's one about Venezuela. Here's one against China and cyber attacks. Here's one against Burundi, who even knows what (laughs) continent that's on, okay? Um, Then you've got uh, um, Myanmar. This is Donald Trump's emergencies. Here's one Russian interference in our elections. Here's one uh, about the foreign policy of countries that try and undermine our democracy, specifically Nicaragua. So there's 33 still on the books, Jermaine, right now, and I'll bet you a dollar Now, one of your viewers knew these were still on the books out of the 50-something had been declared. The only one they know about, well, it's the only one I knew about that was still around, was the one that got declared last week because it's all over the news as if it's something horrible that has never been done before. I mean, truly, is Burundi so needing a national emergency declaration that that's okay and drug traffickers and human traffickers and terrorists crossing the border from Mexico is somehow not a national emergency, but Burundi is? That's literally what your people ought to be asking themselves. Why isn't that reported in the news? 